All right, so we're gonna go ahead and look at this, this sign and, and break down everything that it means. And right away you can see that there's a lot going on here. And there's this huge long sentence, or two sentences actually, that this whole section here is gonna be a pretty long explanation, but I'm gonna start by explaining what's just happening here, because this is gonna sort of give us the, the whole uh, general idea of, of what we're gonna expect. Now, this word here, Jae Wa um, this part here, Hwa Ryong, that means to, to use or to put to practical use. But this character here, Jae, and this whole, this whole thing is one word, Jae Wa Ryong, this part here, Jae, is, is often put in front of uh, words to sort of say re or redo something, and depending on what this following uh, noun is, it means to sort of redo that thing. Now, if we're going to use and then reuse, what this word means altogether means to recycle. And I'm, I'm not very good at Hanja, especially drawing it. I, I can recognize them very well. But this character, Che, and somebody's going to correct me, my, my Hanja drawing here, but it looks something like this, just off memory. And I, and I have no formal Hanja training, but I know it looks something like this. If, if you know anything about Hanja, it's going to look... Uh, I always mess this up, and I, I'm probably going to mess it up somehow, but it looks something like that. If you happen to know any Chinese or any Hanja, that's the character for Che. Another word that you'd see Che in is in maybe Che Thing, and it means to, to replay, like you, on your remote control, you might have a button, Che Thing, and that's to sort of, if you've paused the, the movie that you're watching, you can replay it using the button Che Thing. Another time you'd see Che is... There's a very important test that maybe you know. It's like the SAT test. It happens once every year called Sunung. And if you don't do well on the test, you can do it the following year. And if you, if you do it the following year, it's called Che Su. And that Che is just sort of saying you're redoing the Sunung test. Anyways, I spent too much time talking about that Che. But uh, I always find it fun to talk about uh, Hanja and, and how it sort of fits into the meaning of the word. So right here we have recycling. Now this next big word here, buryusugo, uh, and I'll talk about that's just il just means day. So we can forget about that for now. It just means day. But right now we're looking at buryusugo. So some, something's happening on some certain day, but it's the buryusugo il. Now buri means to separate, and suga sort of means to collect. But I remember when I first learned this word about ten years ago, I sort of tried to figure out what what this means and it means to collect and I try to figure out or sorry it means to separate and then I figured out what this means and it means to collect and I was sort of taking them as, as separate things and, and I assume that Korean people say them separate all the time and sometimes they do depending on the situation but they're very commonly used together Burisuga as one whole word and what that means is Korean people whenever they recycle their uh, their waste they, of course, they separate into many different things. They have their plastics, their papers, the styrofoams, the cans, the glass, and there's actually different types of plastic depending on if it's like a soft plastic, like a plastic bag, or a hard plastic, like a, like a jar. All that gets separated. And that process, and the process of separating it and picking it up is called burisuba. So when you're talking about uh, um Recycling. You could actually, you could, you could say just burisugo. You could just say this burisugo, or you could say chewaryo, and and both of them are are fine. But this this particular uh, sign happens to have both of them together. So we have chewaryo burisugo il. So all of this here, and maybe I'll I'll get rid of all the stuff that I've drawn here because it's getting a little too messy. But all of this stuff here is describing this day. So what we have is on the day. On the day of recycling, so on the recycling day, and um, junsu means sort of to it, the, the the verb junsu hada means to to comply or to obey, and the noun just junsu would mean I guess compliance or, or the, whatever the noun of uh, to comply or to obey would be. So compliance, and this is sort of just the guidance. So what this is doing or information that you should follow or the guidance that you should follow. So this title I, or the main idea of this whole sign is saying 
on the recycling day, this is the information or the guidance that you should be following or that you should comply with. And then all this down here is going to tell me on the day of recycling, all this stuff is what I'm going to have to do or what I will have to do. And actually this thing here, I'm going to circle this. So the Chewaryong Purisugo, that's going to come up a lot in the, um, in the sign. I'm, I'm actually going to underline it uh, anytime we see those words now in blue, just so we can sort of come back to it. So there's Purisugo here. And then there's Chewaryong Purisugo again here. And I guess that's it for now. All right. So, uh, okay, great. We have Burisugo. We already know what that means. That's talking about the the dividing, the Buri, the separating of, of the waste, that and that recycling. That next word here, Shigan, is referring to the time. So earlier we were learning about, okay, the Burisugo day, but specifically now the time. The time of the day, or, or the time, is going to be happening, and this is when it's going to be happening. Meiju. Mei, it's often used with mei il, and il we already knew was day. So this is every. Mei means every, and ju means week. So every week. And toyu il means Saturday. So here we have uh, every week on Saturday. And then it's going to tell me the time here. This whole part here is going to tell me the time that every week on Saturday. And what I have is, so every week on Saturday, ojon means morning. And then this part here, you can probably figure that out. In the morning, between 6 a.m. And, and 12 noon. And the reason, the way I know it's morning, it doesn't say a.m. or p.m., but ojon means morning. Uh, ohu would mean afternoon and Anyway, so it doesn't say ohu, but it says ojun. So every, this whole thing says, this whole line here, this whole line says the recycling time is every, every week on Saturday in the morning from 6 to 12. And just, just so you remember, this, the way I pronounce this, is it's not yukshi and ship ishi. That, um, unfortunately, Koreans have two completely different way to say numbers, but Instead, what you have to say is yosashi to uh, yarudushi. And if you know that, it's, it's probably very simple. But if you don't know that, it might be a little bit difficult. But you have to use the, the Korean numbers here when you're talking about the hours. And un unfortunately, it's kind of crazy. If you actually did say yukshi to ship ishi, it would be completely incomprehensible. You always have to when you're talking about the hours, which we are here because we're talking about uh, shi, which means the hour. Um, you have to use the Korean numbers. Okay, great. Now we have this whole, or these two whole long big sentences here. And um, this first part, this first part of the sentence, from, from here to, um, to here, I'm going to take a few minutes to explain this. Uh, I'm gonna, maybe I'll underline it, maybe I'll do it in a different color here, maybe I'll start doing it in red. So this whole thing here is a little complicated. And I, I want to start just by explaining a little bit of grammar. Um, if you go to, oh, I, I should have said this before. This is, you can learn how to, how to um, tell Korean time in, in my lesson, lesson number 10. It says down here, telling Korean time. And, and I get into all of how you can read Korean time and, and stuff like that. But my lesson here on, Lesson 26 on Nungot. And what this is, I'll leave right down, Nungot. What this is, and you, you actually see it here, you see it here, and you see it here. You see it three times, just this one little clause. This allows me, this allows me to describe a noun, and caught is a noun, meaning thing, and this caught could be anything. It, it, the the placeholder is caught, which just means thing. But you could literally put any noun here. And what this does is I'm able to describe any any noun with a verb. So I that's what this grammatical principle here allows me to do. I can describe a noun with a verb. 
Now, you might be saying, if you haven't learned lesson 26 yet, you might be saying, well, how could I possibly describe a noun with a verb? Well, I'll explain it. Here we go. If You probably understand how to describe a noun with an adjective. So here is, uh, maybe I'll just do a simple one. Now what we have is and it's conjugated so it allows me to describe uh, a noun. It, that means happy, happy person. Okay, great. Now, it actually works the same way in English and in Korean for this. I have an adjective that describes a noun. And here as well, I have an adjective that describes a noun. In both cases, the adjective is before, so I go adjective and then I go to a noun. And that's the same in both Korean and English. Now, if I want to describe uh, a noun with a verb, the process is actually different for in Korean and in, and in English. And if you want to describe a noun with a verb in English, it's actually the other way around. For example, if I was going to say the person I meet, and blah, blah, I'd have to say I meet every day or something like that to make, uh, make it make sense. Every, oh, sorry, that says everybody. Every day. The person I meet every day. Now, what I have here is I have the person, but well, who is this person? Well, it's the person I meet every day. In this case, this, the, this verb, or this, 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 the main part is the verb, but this whole thing is describing this person. In Korean, this I meet everybody. Every I meet every day actually goes before uh, the noun, and it, in in English it's the other way around. In English, I have the as you can see here, I have the description of the person coming after the noun, but in, in Korean it's the other way around, and it it hap it works just like this, just like here I have adjective and noun. I have 행복한 사람, but what I have to do is instead of adding instead of adding this. I need to add this. And, this, and we're talking about the present tense here, but I need to add this. So for example, if I was going to say that the person I meet every day, I have to say, uh, that means I, that's the I. Oh, look, there's my may again, which we saw earlier uh, up here with the may ju. I every day, I say ma, So what I have here is I meet every day person. Now this thing here, this nun, allows me to describe, allows this whole clause to describe this noun or this person. And it's the same thing as this. This is how we do it in, in English. And actually in English, there's too much red here. In English, what we sometimes do is, I guess the same thing for nun would be that. So I would say the person that I meet every day. But in, in Korean, the way that they do that is they take a clause, put it before a noun, and then put nun uh, on the stem of the, 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 la of the verb right in immediately before the noun. So that's a very long explanation. Let me clean up all this, all this writing here. What I have here is, if I just look at this part, this nun is that same thing that, that I just taught you about that's describing this upcoming noun. There actually should be spaces here. There should actually be a space here. There should actually be a space here. But for some reason, whoever printed the sign, they didn't make these spaces. But what I have here, maybe I'll just write it out because to show you where the spaces should be. I should have byung dun ji nun sorry. That's what it, it should be. There should be a space in between in here and, and here, but there's not. Now what I have is, and then there's a comma, and then the next one is this this part, and I have Gangtong Dunjinen Sorry. And then again. Again, there should be a space there, and th there is there actually is a space here. So back here there was no space, but there is a space here. So that that's the way it's supposed to be. Sorry about my handwriting. And then here as well. Uh, this this part is yuri, which means glass. Yuri, and there should be a space here, but there's not. Yuri, 
Cartesian, sorry. So what I have here, the, this and this and this, you can see they all have this thing, this sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm not saying sorry, 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 but I'm saying sorry, 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 which means sound. And if, if you just understand the purpose of, and I'll do this in another color because I really want to highlight this purpose of nun in this sentence. If you understand what this is, and as, as I described it before, it's allowing me to describe this upcoming noun. If you understand all the meanings of all the words, it's actually a very simple set of words that I have here. This means bottle, this means throw, and again, this means sound all the time. So that means sound, this means sound, so what do you mean sound? So this means bottle, throw, sound. Now that doesn't make any sense in English, but the sound that is made from throwing bottles. And then this means empty cans, I'll just write cans, but you don't throw out, you don't recycle cans that are full of stuff, they're empty cans, that's what the gang is. And then this means throw. Again, this this and this is the same thing. And again, it's not cans throw sound. It's the sound that is made from throwing cans. And then here as well, it's I have sound. And this this here means break or sh shatter. And I told you before, this means glass. So what I have here is the sound that is made from breaking glass. Actually, I, I should I should say that this gejita doesn't mean to break, but Actually, geita, geita means to break, but geita would, is the, the passive form of uh, geita, or the passive form of to break, which would be to be broken. And I, I guess the better way to say this little clause here would be the sound when glass is broken. But it's the reason why I wrote break is because these, these two here are, are you know active clauses where somebody throws this bottle and somebody's br throwing these cans but here for some reason it's a, it's passive where it, it, you could have said yuri yuri genen sorry but it's yuri geijinen sorry anyways um so this whole beginning of this long sentence i have byeong danjinen byeong danjinen sorry gangtong danjinen sorry yuri geijinen sorry that's the, the sound of bottles being thrown, the sound of cans being thrown, and the sound of glass breaking, or the glass being broken. And dung and uro, or, or dung just means etc. So it, it, all of these things, and, and some other things that would be similar to that. And uro in this case just means as due to these things, or, or as a result of all of these things. Now, this word here, nutta, let me write the base form of this word here, nutta, is an adjective, and as we saw with verbs, and as we saw also with adjectives, they can describe the upcoming uh, noun, and here the upcoming noun is shigan, and there should be a space here, but for some reason this person, whoever wrote this sign, does not like including spaces where he should have, but there should be a space there. Nutta and shigan, there should be a space there, but if I want to use nutta, which means, which means late, to describe time, I need to put un. Or, or it, it, it's un because this has uh, this stem ends in a consonant, but it could also be just just the letter that just that that one letter. But anyways, it's this one, so it becomes nuzun shigan, which is this which is what I have written down here. And it's what is written here, nizhin sigan. And that just means late time. And again, it's a noun being described by an adjective. And the way that I'm able to do this is with this uh, particle. And again, with verbs, it's not un, but it's actually nun. But here we're talking about an, an adjective that describes the noun. And mit just means uh, in addition to. So, so far what we've seen is uh, all, all of these sounds, etc., and, and as a, resu a result of all of these sounds and other sounds, at a late time, in addition to... Now, sebyuk is, is an interesting word in Korean. There is... I always like to describe this, and I describe this in my lessons. There is achim, which generally just refers to the morning. And there is jamshim, which sort of refers to 
lunch or lunch time, and there's also chanyak, and that refers to the evening. And you could also say pam, which refers to the night, and you could also say not, which refers to the day. But there's another word, sebyak, and that's the word that we're talking about here, sebyak. Uh, now, sebyak, it I guess you refer to it as the early morning, and this is generally like. Achim would be, I don't know, this is all ran, randomly, but Achim would be maybe from maybe 6 o'clock in the morning till, till noon, and this is around lunchtime, and this is uh, the evening time, and this is night, and this is day. But Sebak is sort of between midnight, uh, I could say, I guess, 12.01, and t- until about, I don't know, until about 6 a.m., and usually when people are sleeping in the morning. Uh, so, again, we have... Late at night, or nuzin shigan, which is late at night. In addition to sebyak shigan, which is again early in the morning when people are sleeping. So when they say nuzin shigan, in addition to sebyak shigan, what they're basically referring to is, you know, maybe the time from when people go to bed at night, which I don't know, maybe would be nine o'clock or or ten o'clock, nine p.m. to uh, to what we would refer to as sebyak here, which would be six a.m. Um, and, and and even before I go further, you can sort of see where this is going here. We're talking about all of these sounds, this bottles being thrown and these can or these cans being thrown and the glass being broken. And nobody likes that sound happening at between these times. Nobody likes those sounds at any time, but especially not between those times because that's usually my my sleeping time. And these these four numbers here and this dong tells me what those four numbers are referring to, but these four numbers refer to in an accomp- in, in a Korean apartment complex, which is called a tanji, and the word tanji doesn't appear anywhere, but in, an, in a Korean apartment complex, there's a tanji, and uh, a tanji is sort of a place that has maybe a building here with lots of apartments, and a building here with lots of apartments, and an apartment here with lots of apartments, and here with lots of apartments in it. But there's multiple buildings within one danji. So this whole thing might be a danji. And I would refer to one of these buildings as a dong. And so this might be uh, 204 uh, dong, and this one might be 205 dong, and this might be 206 dong, and this might be 207 dong. Uh, and just so you know, I use the, uh, I, I would say in Korean, I would say, ibek, ibek. Sa dong or ibek o dong or ibek yuk dong or ibek chil dong. So, what they're saying here is these, and what I'm guessing just by uh, intuition reading this, these these buildings, these specific dongs, these specific uh, individual buildings within the apartment complex, must be near where this bulisuga is happening. So, if, if you imagine, maybe there's this is where the recycling happens and and that's where all the sound is being made and that's you know where the cans are being thrown this is where it's happening if you if you imagine the the tanji you you'd say well okay well maybe these people don't really hear all that bad sounds and these people here don't really hear all those bad bad sounds but imagine if you lived in this one or in this one you'd hear a lot of those sounds so it's saying that these specific people that live in these things are, are, are probably going to hear, you know, these sounds that we don't want to hear at these times that they don't want to hear them. And then that actually is what's about to be said here. It says, itjumin, which refers to residence, 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 and specifically residents of these, uh, these, uh, these dong or these, these specific buildings. And again, dur, if you don't know what dur means, that just allows me to make uh, something plural. And it, it's more specifically used when we're referring to people. Sometimes it's used with objects, but residence, uh, that's the, the S part. It's not just one resident, but the residents that are living in the buildings close to where the sound is being made. Uh, this word here, burpyan hada, means to be uncomfortable. But you can put this... At, at the end, and that's what this is here. You can put this, or, or this, depending on how the, the uh, depending on how the stem ends. And in this case, it ends in a vowel. So I'm going to add this, this letter. 
to, in order to create a noun. And actually, I talk about that uh, in lesson 29. I talk about adding either this or this, depending on if it if the stem ends in a consonant, I would add this, or if it ends in a vowel, which I would add that directly to the stem. And again, I said that brutan hada means to be uncomfortable. And brutan ham would be the noun form of uncomfortableness or inconvenience or something like that. And you can imagine if you lived in these dongs, these buildings, and some people were throwing cans and breaking glass and all that stuff around this time, that would be pretty uncomfortable. And you would be undergoing or experiencing that uncomfortableness. And the, the verb that is often used in Korean to... It, it's very hard to translate this verb here, kyokta. I'll write the base form of the verb here, kyokta. It's very hard to translate this word because it, it sort of goes... It's a verb that it goes with uh, when, when somebody's undergoing some sort of hardship. So it, it usually is placed after a noun that is, either means hardship or uncomfortableness or something like that. So this this verb here, kakta, is saying that these these residents are undergoing or experiencing or going through this uncomfortableness. Uh, and actually, in manta, that's just saying many. So uh, they're going through a lot of uncomfortableness uh, because of all these sounds that are happening around this time. And this this one here, momohagoita, that's just saying that momohagoita, that's just saying um, that it is happening. So I can say hagoita or mokoita, I'm eating or I'm doing. And this is saying that they are experiencing. So they're not just, they didn't experience in the past. They won't experience in the future. Or, or maybe they will, but it's not indicating they will experience in the future. They're, it's indicating that they are experiencing currently. So, and now, great, we have a period. So let's go through this whole first long sentence that says, I'll get my mouse here, it says, the sound, and again, Korean is always backwards, so this might not sound perfect in English, but this is, you get the gist of it if I say it in English. The sound of throwing bottles, the sound of breaking cans, and the sound of, oh, sorry, the sound of throwing cans, and the sound of uh, breaking glass, and others, etc., because of that, at late at night, in addition to uh, early in the morning, these, the, the residents, the residents down here who live in these specific buildings are under are are currently undergoing a lot of discomfort or uncomfortableness and a lot of it now here uh, we start our next sentence and oh great we already know what this means and Shigan we actually already saw that word as well that means time so already you can get that this time or the recycling time this word here just means definitely and then here's again this chunsu that we saw earlier as well chunsu up here is referring to um, to comply or to, to follow the rules correctly so already you can sort of see where this is going I'll just say the whole thing and I'll, and I'll break down this, this last part in a second but it's saying please comply and, and definitely 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 please comply uh, to the specific times well what are the specific times again well these were the specific times that they're telling me to do it they're saying when you are going to do your recycling don't do it at these ridiculous times when people are trying to sleep do it between the in the morning between 6 a.m. and, and noon and that's reasonable. You don't want to have people throwing their cans right beside your house, uh, right outside your window between these times here. This time here seems a little bit more reasonable. So this this last sentence, and then this here, this extension adding to the, the end of the verb, basically that means please. And it's a long, it's a whole lot of stuff just to say please. And... I don't want to go through the whole thing uh, here, but I have a lesson that talks about specifically, and actually I'll go back to the picture just for a second. What, what I'm looking at is it's you're adding this, a ah, or a, ah, depending on what the stem of this verb is, and then jushiki param 
Yeah, nah, sorry about my handwriting. That should be it. Yeah. And you might be saying, okay, well, what does that mean? A again, that just basically means please. But if you want to see where I break that down, if you go to lesson 61, and there's parada, which you see at the end of that sentence I just showed you. And um, I, I break that whole thing down, and it, there's a whole lot of ways that you can say, please do something for me, and or do something for me. And this is one way that you can say it, but another way is to basically add this. And that's what we're seeing there. And it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, if you're going to directly translate it, it doesn't mean please. It sort of means, I would love it, I would really, really be grateful, and I would love it if you did this for me. But what we can translate that to is, is please in, in, uh, in English. Well, that looks like a lot of stuff if you look at what we're looking at here. And I just want to round this off by just saying what this last, and I better use a different color here. This last little bit down here, this is just saying who, basically who wrote it. And I should go see the person who wrote this because there's a lot of places where there should be spaces in here, but there isn't. It just says Sanoksu, which is a neighborhood, and that's not a word. That's just a neighborhood. Sanoksu is a neighborhood. Yojin, again, that doesn't mean anything. That's This next thing here says Apatu, and Apatu means apartment. And Yojin is the, the name of the apartment. And this is, again, this is more specifically, it's Sanwaksu Yojin Apatu. This is just, you can't look that up in the dictionary. This is just the name of the uh, the apartment complex. And this part here, I'm sorry, I, I gotta use a, a thinner marker, but this is Kwari Samusol. And that just means the office or the, the management office or something like that. So if you wanna know who wrote this, it's the management office of this apartment. Well, if you look at all the stuff that we have written here, that's a that's a lot of stuff. Uh, maybe I'll just read the whole thing out loud just for fun. It says, "Chewar yang buri suga il junsu ane," and then it says, "Buri suga shigan meju toyu il ojan yasashi until yaldushi." I guess I should have said should have said that in Korean. Ojan yasashi buto yaldushi kaze. And then this whole sentence, which is a little bit easier to say because it's not this point form stuff. Pyong tanjinen sori, gangtong tanjinen sori, yuri gejinen sori, dunguro, nujin shigan mid, sebek shigan, ibek sa, ibek o, ibek yuk dong, ipchumindri, manun purpan hammer, gyoku isimida, tewar yong burisuga shigan or pandeshi, junsu he jushigi paramida, samaksu yojin apat, kwari samuso. And again, in English, if I was going to break down that whole thing in English, it would, it would say, uh, FYI, when you're recycling, this is what you should be doing. This is the time that you should be recycling. Every Saturday uh, between 6 a.m. and noon, the, because of the sound of throwing bottles and, and throwing empty cans and breaking glass, uh, the people who live in this in these uh, buildings are undergoing some uncomfortableness. Please follow these times that we've outlined above. Thank you from the Senwaksu uh, Yojin Apartments uh, office. Well, that was fun.